All right, guys. Mr. Rushka here. What's up? I'll try to make this 5.6 notes video as short as possible, but there is a decent amount. Eh, I guess there's not too much material, okay? All right, so going into 5.6, okay? Let's do this, right? They want us to solve triangle CHS. So we got to find this little C here and this big angle S, this big angle H, okay? Hmm. Okay, so they gave you, uh, let's, let's set up the uh, law of sines, right? Sine big C over little c equals sine big H over little h, which equals sine big S all over little s, okay? Let's go ahead and plug in that big angle C there, and then let's plug in that little s that we have right across from angle S. Let's plug in that little h that we have, okay? All right, let's cross multiply. Oh no, if we cross multiply up these two left ones, right? We still, we get stuck with one equation and two variables, okay? Let's try these two over here. Oh no, if we cross multiply, we're still stuck. We have two variables, only one equation here. If we try to cross multiply the first and third expressions, we still are stuck, right? All right, if you don't believe me, try to solve this with the law of sines. You're gonna have a horrible time, okay? Thus, we, this proves my point that instead, we have to use, in this case, we have to use what's called the law of cosines. All right, read it and weep. All right, actually don't weep, it's beautiful. I love the law of cosines. It's my favorite, it's awesome. Okay, so this is a little formula we have, okay? So let's try using this guy right here. Try using this guy to solve, okay? So what I'm gonna try to do is, um, I'm just gonna use the law of cosines to solve for this final side right here. And then at that point, I'll have enough information to, for the law of sines to actually work, okay? I just need to find this little C here. Then I can actually use the law of sines, okay? All right. So let's start plugging stuff in. I don't know C, little C, right? I'm solving for that. Little H is 10. All right, little s is 12. I'm plugging in hs and cosine c, we have times 10 times 12 times cosine of 58 degrees. All right, so c squared equals 100 plus 144 minus, what is that? Minus 240, cosine 58 degrees, okay. C squared equals 244, minus 240, cosine 58 degrees. Or C is gonna be the positive square root of 244 minus 240, cosine 58 degrees, okay. Let me get my calculator, oh gosh, where did I, oh, he's all the way over here, I have to get up from my chair. Oh, worst case scenario, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's put that in our calculator. All right, so I get about 10.8 for C. All right, so got to had to do 10.8, all right. Good stuff. All right. So let me, uh, then I can just use the law of sines, right? If we have sine big C over little c equals sine big H over little h, which equals sine big S over little s, okay? So let me use this formula, okay? So I can plug in that 58 degrees. Now I can plug in that little c I have that I got with the law of cosines, right? I can plug in little h, which is 10. Don't know big h yet, but that's fine. I can plug in little s, which is 12, okay? 
So then I'm just going to use the law of sines to solve the rest of this equation, okay? One thing I want to note, let's ask ourselves, right, when you're using the law of sines, do we have to worry about the ambiguous case, right? Well, we only have to worry about the ambiguous case if we have ASS, angle side side. They didn't give us that here, right? In this problem, they gave us side angle side, right? Remember, guys, the uh, four ways from geometry of proving two triangles congruent, right? For these, there's no ambiguous case, no ambiguous case, right? The only time we have amb an ambiguous case, right? That was the only time we had an ambiguous case in geometry, right? That was the only way in geometry that we couldn't prove two, two triangles congruent. That was ASS, okay? So we actually don't have an ambiguous case here. We don't need to worry about that, okay? And one thing, when you're using the law of cosines, there's no ambiguous case for the law of cosines, when you use that, okay? So let's go back down here to sign. Okay, you only need to worry about the uh, ambiguous case when you're doing an ASS triangle with the law of sines, okay? So back down here, let's cross multiply 10.8 sine big H equals 10 sine 58. Solving for big H, we get H equals inverse sine of 10 sine 58 all over 10.8, all right. Make sure you calculate there's on degree mode. Mine's on degree mode, right? Yep. 10 sine 58 divided by 10.8, inverse sine of the answer. Oh, whoops, hit the wrong button. 10 sine 58 divided by 10.8, inverse sine of the answer. 50, so I get H equals 51.7 degrees, all right. And then for that third side, right, you could, if you just love using the law of sines, you can cross multiply these two fractions. Or if you uh, want to do it the easy way, remember that all three of these angles have to add up to 180. So we can do 180 minus that angle I just found, minus 58, and I get 70 point two, uh, about 70.3 degrees, okay? So that problem's finished, okay? So let me talk about this, right? I kind of just quickly introduced this law of cosines, okay? I very quickly introduced it, okay? So I want to help you guys um, figure out when you should use the law of cosines. So one instance in which you might use the law of cosines is if you try the law of sines and you get stuck, kind of like we did, we did at the beginning of this problem, if that's the case, just turn to your law of cosines and see if that works, okay? All right, but in general, and this is on the answer key for the review, okay? Law of cosines, and I'll highlight this in blue. What? What? Oh. Law of, co <sighs> law of cosines is really good when we have... SAS or SSS, okay? That's when we want to use law of cosines. That's in general a good place. Actually, you kind of have to use law of cosines there. So, yeah. All right. If they give you AAS or ASA or ASS, in general, you want to use the law of sines. All right? But remember, ASS, ambiguous case, right? Ambiguous case, okay? So the red's when you want to use the law of sines. The blue is when you want to use the law of cosines, okay? So coming down here to this triangle B, I already drew it, right? I'm trying to save you guys time. They gave us SSS, right, all three sides. That's a case in which we want to use the law of cosines, right? If you tried to use the law of sines in here, plug everything into the equation, what's going to happen is um, the whole... If you 
try to plug everything into the law of sines, right? You're gonna have all these lengths to plug into the bottoms, but you won't have anything to plug into the top. You won't be able to cross, you can cross multiply, but you'll have two variables in each equation you won't be able to solve. So for these, when they give us side, 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 you wanna use the law of cosines, okay? So just go ahead, just go ahead and pick, um, go ahead and pick uh, a, a, an angle to solve for. So I'll just start with S. Okay, so let's fill this in with our formula, okay? So the side across from our angle, okay, that's always the side that's by itself. The side across from the angle that we're interested in is always the side that's by itself in the equation. So 6.4 squared is going to be on the left side of the equation by itself. That's going to equal 7.6 squared plus 3.2 squared minus 2 times 7.6 times 3.2 times the cosine of big S. <coughs> Crunching all that in my calculator, I get 6.4 squared, so 40.96 equals 7.6 squared plus 3.2 squared. It's gonna be 68 minus two times 7.6 times 3.2. 48.64 cosine A, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over here just for more space. My apologies, copy, paste, okay? All right, so we gotta solve for A, okay? So let's subtract 68 from both sides. negative 27.04 equals negative 48.64 cosine A. Or cosine A equals about 0 0.559. Taking the inverse cosine of both sides We get A is about equal to 56.2 degrees, okay? Right, sorry, why did I change it to A? Like, wh why did I even do that? Good Lord. Sorry, A was S the whole time. Oh my gosh, it's not good. Sorry, A was just S the whole time, sorry. So S is 56.2 degrees. Okay. So we use the law of signs, right? I think the trickiest part is knowing which numbers to put where, okay? Just make sure when you look at the law of signs, there's always this side that's off by itself on the left side of the equation. That is the side that's across from the angle that you're plugging into cosine, okay? And then the other two sides go over here. Okay, can't, can't screw that part up. All right, so now we have... Uh, side, angle, side. So we actually still want to use the law of cosines, right? Uh, or can we use the law of sines at this point? I think we can use the law of sines at this point. Let, let's see. Let's just try. Let's just try. Let, let's just try. Let's just try. So we get sine of 56.2 degrees. Yeah, we can use the law of sines over 6.4 equals uh, uh, sine of big C over 3.2, which equals sine of big H all over 7.6. Okay, so there you have it. All right. And again, right, we're using the law of sines, but we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case here because we have side, angle, side. Ambiguous case you only have to worry about with S A with A S S, sorry. So let's cross multiply 3.2 sine 
56.2 degrees equals 6.4 sine C, or C equals inverse sine of 3.2 sine 56.2 degrees all over 6.4. So solving that, we get C is about equal to 24.6 degrees. All right, and then that third angle we can find just by subtracting the two angles we have from 180. So I got 99.2 degrees for that third angle. Boom, we're done, okay? Good stuff, let's go on to C. Let's see what we got here, right? So we've got what? We've got angle, side, side. <gasps> oh no! It's the ambiguous case, right? That's never fun. Okay. Um, Miss, looks like Miss White did this in her notes. Looks like she used the law of cosines for this. I actually can't figure out why. Um, and I feel like to avoid confusion. What am I going to do to avoid confusion? Eh. They gave us ASS. Let's use the law of cosines for this, okay? There's no ambiguous case when you're using the law of cosines, okay? So they gave us ASS. So we're using the law of cosines. We don't have to be careful about the ambiguous case, okay? So using the law of cosines, we have, we're gonna put, so we have this angle, so we're gonna end up plugging 57 degrees into um, into our law of cosines equation, okay? So the side that's gonna be by itself on the left is gonna be the side across from that. So I'll have 11 squared equals 10 squared plus a squared minus two times 10 times a times cosine of 57 degrees, okay? So we have 121 equals 100 plus a squared minus 20a cosine of 57 degrees. All right, we're gonna have to head and we're gonna have to change that to that cosine 57 times 20. We're gonna have to change that to a decimal for the purposes of this problem. So my equation becomes 121 equals 100 plus a squared. Uh, what is that? Minus 10.9a, okay? I'm gonna get this quadratic equation in standard form. I get zero equals, and I'm gonna order my terms in descending degree, all right? So this is, I'm gonna solve this equation right here with the quadratic formula. So the decimal comes out to about 14.2. Let me have a two in the bottom. All right, all right, let's look at this. We have a plus or minus symbol. If I do 10.9 minus 4.2, 14.2, I'm gonna get a negative number. 
can't have a negative length. This is a side length, can't, so it's going to be 10.9 plus 14.2. Okay, so 10.9 plus 14.2 all over 2. It's going to be about 12.6. So this A right here equals 12.6. There we go. Then we can just use the law of sines to get this angle B right here. And at this point, we have S, A, S. We don't have the ambiguous case when we pull out the law of sines. Okay. So let's do that. So we're going to do sine of big B all over 10 equals sine of, what is that? Big A over 12.6. Oh wait, not big A, sorry. I'm gonna use big C, gosh. Sorry guys, I'm very tired. All over 11, okay. All right, so we just did that to avoid the ambiguous case here. All right, ambiguous case is just when we're using the law of sines with an ASS triangle, okay? All right. Solving for this, we get B equals inverse sine of 10 sine 57 degrees all over 11. So we get 49.7 degrees for big angle B. Okay, the third side right, we'll just subtract the two angles we know from 180. So 73.3 degrees. There you go, we solved the triangle. Woohoo! Okay, good stuff. All right, um, good. All right, so we'll go down here, number two. We're gonna switch gears a little bit. So this is another formula. It's on your formula sheet, right? So it's find the area of the triangle if they give you these measurements, okay? So let's draw our triangle. I wanna illustrate something to you guys. So A, B, C, 47 degrees, 32, 19, okay. So they gave us what? What kind of triangle measurements are these? They gave us side, angle, side, right? So finding the area of the triangle, when they give you, when they give you side, angle, side, You want to use this formula here. The area equals one half AB sine C. All right, I guess here, let me not trip you guys up. It's got to be a sine of A. So that's going to be one half BC. So when you give, they give you side angle side, use area equals one half. B, C, sine A, okay? So, yeah, and this is actually isn't too hard to plug in because you they gave you SAS, side angle side. You only have two sides that you can plug in and one angle. So this is actually easier to plug stuff in, to know what to plug in, to know where to put it. So the area of this triangle is going to be 1 half times 19 times 32 times uh, the sine of 47 degrees, okay? There we go, just put that in your calculator.
So we get about, let me check my answers, 222.3 square feet. Yep, so just use your calculator, kind of just got to plug and chug. All right, B, B. So big A, big B, big C, little B is 12, big B is 57 degrees, big A is 43 degrees right here, right? Uh, cool. All right, Um. so we want to use that formula, right? One half BC sine A. And it can actually be anything, any combination, right? But oh no, what do we not know here, guys? We don't, so we don't have SAS. We have angle, angle, side, right? So what we wanna do, I'm gonna mark this with a little c, right? If we did have little c here, we would have side, angle, side, right? We need, we need side, angle, side to use this formula. Oh, excuse me, I have angle, angle, side here. That falls under, uh, one of my law of signs cases, see that red angle, angle, side, law of signs. Don't have to worry about the ambiguous case here. I do not have to worry about the ambiguous case here because I have angle, angle, side. Ambiguous case only pops up law of signs on an ASS triangle, okay? So let's do a uh, sine of, of uh, 57 degrees over 12, that's gonna equal I want to solve for that, oh uh, gosh. I did want to solve for that little C. Uh, ah, crap. Uh, I'm gonna have to pivot here. Yeah, because I don't know big C. Actually, I can just get big C, right? I can just subtract 43 and 57 from 180. Duh. Okay. 80 degrees, sorry about that. There we go, now I sign 80 degrees over little C. Cool, good stuff. So let's cross multiply. I knew I had it. So C is going to be 12 sine 80 degrees divided by sine of 57 degrees. So we get about 14.1 for C. All right, plugging that into this formula. We get area equals one half. Go to your side angle side that you have here, right? You have an angle sandwich between two sides. It's gonna equal one half times 14.1 times 12 times the sine of the angle in between my two sides that I just plugged in. To clear up any confusion. So I get area equals about 57.7 centimeters squared, right? Let's not forget our units, okay, guys? Good stuff. All right, moving on to C. Let's draw this triangle. So they gave me three side lengths here, actually. They give me 16. I'll just wait. Let me label this differently. A, B, C. They gave me 16, 12, and 10. Okay. Area equals one half A, B, sine C. Oh, wait. Sorry. I said B, C, sine A. That actually, it actually doesn't really matter. It just, just plug in it. The letters don't really matter. It doesn't matter what letters we're using as long as you just plug in two sides and the angle in between them. So I could also do like, if I did sine of C, I could do 12 times, I could do one half times 12 times 16 times sine of C. It just has to be two sides and the angle in between them, all right? But first we need an angle here, right? So we have a side, side, side triangle. Law of sines is gonna help us. So we actually do need to get use the law of cosines 
to find one of my angles real quickly. So I'll just do angle A real quick. All right. So write the angle, the side across from the angle I'm interested in is what goes by itself. So 16 squared equals then the other two sides, 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12 times cosine of big A. Okay, 16 squared is 256, 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144. Uh, minus 240, cosine A. It's coming along, coming along. Subtract 244 from both sides. 256 minus 244 is 12 equals negative 240 cosine A. Or A equals inverse cosine of negative 12 over 240. So that's equal to about 92.9. So I have 92.9 right here. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a phone call. Hey mom. I'm hoping to get home by five. I'm actually filming a video right now. Can I call you right after I finish? Can I have it early? All right, bye. Sorry about that, all right. So 92.9 degrees, now I have everything I need, right? I just need an angle between two sides. That's all I need to use this area formula. So the area is going to equal 1 half times 10 times 12 times the sine of 92.9 degrees. Okay, put in your calculator. You get 49.3 centimeters squared. All right, good stuff. All right, we'll skip D. Good, okay. So three story prob, oh, four, okay. That's fine. All right, find the area of a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle of radius 12 inches, okay? What's the only area formula we've used this whole section? That's right, it's one half B, C, sine A, okay? So we just need, right, and again, our letters don't matter as long as we just plug in at any angle that's between two sides that we know. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. Look at that. Look at my, I drew, drew a perfect circle. Okay, no, I'm kidding. All right, um, I'm going to draw a regular hexagon. That This is probably going to be horrible. I apologize in advance. Boom, okay? We want to find the area of the hexagon, okay? So the way I do this, I draw a point in the middle. I split the hexagon up into triangles. Okay. I want the area of this hexagon. What I'm going to do, these are six equal area triangles. I'm just going to find the area of one triangle and multiply it by six. And that will be the area of my hexagon, since there are six triangles here, okay? So what I do is, let's look at this. The angles that are drawn from my vertices to my center, right? Those are all radii of the circles. So those are all equal to 12. So this, I'm just going to pick this bottom triangle right here. We have a 12 length side and a side of length 12 on this side, right? We just need one more thing to use the area formula. We just need the angle between those two sides that we know, okay? The way you do that, this is the central angle, central angles of a circle, right? It's divided into six equal sectors right here. So 360 divided by six equals 60. So this is a 60 degree angle, all right? Then the area of that triangle, the area of one triangle, 
is going to be 1 half times 12 times 12 times sine of 60 degrees. Okay. That's 62.4. Okay, that's the area of one triangle. Then the final answer will be that number that I just got multiplied by six. So that's 374.1. And that's square inches. So there you go. All right, B. A parallelogram has sides of 18 and 26 feet. Let's draw a triangle. Find the shorter diagonal. Ugh. So these sides are 18. These sides are 26. An angle of 39 degrees. So this is 39 degrees. They want us to find the shorter diagonal. So they want us to find this guy right here. All right, that's gonna be our X, okay? All right, so we have two triangles here. All right, let's just pick one. I'll just pick the bottom one to work with, okay? We have side, angle, side. So I'm not gonna have to worry about any ambiguous case. Side, angle, side, that's a law of cosines that I wanna use, okay? Looking at our, right, what's the angle that we're interested in? The angle that we know, it's this 39 degrees right here, right? The side that's across from the angle goes by itself when I'm using the law of cosine. So x squared is going to equal, and then those other two sides. There you go. Crunch all that right side in your calculator. You get your and then take the square root of it. Take this positive square root of it. All right, I'll just do that right now. Positive square root, and then x is going to be the positive square root of all this. So just crunch that in your calculator. If you did that correctly in your count calculator, you should get sixteen point five. Was that in feet? Feet, yes. Good stuff. Awesome, okay, let's do surveyor's calculations. Tony, he's gotta to find the distance from A to B on opposite sides of a lake. Okay, good for Tony. All right, he's using his uh, surveying stuff. Okay, so they just want us to find, so they actually drew the triangle for you. They just want you to find distance AB, so this guy right here. Uh, let me do a brighter color. They just want you to find this guy right here, all right? Good stuff, okay? So we have side, angle, side, a triangle with side, angle, side given. Again, that's going to be a law of cosines, okay? This is what we're interested in here. This is our X, all right? So when we use the law of cosines, right, the side that we that is across from the angle that we're plugging in is what goes by itself on the left side. X squared and then the two other sides on the right. There you go. Again, take the square root, the positive square root of both sides, right? We can't have a negative length. Plug that on your calculator, you're good to go. So I got 841.2 feet. Good stuff. Let's do D. Two airplanes planes flying together in formation. Oh, Miss White skipped it. All right, good. All right, guys, I really appreciate your cooperation here. 
here's what we want to do for Monday, okay? We're going to try to hit the ground running because we have the quest on Tuesday. So let's do the 5.5 and 5.6 homeworks for sure, okay? And then I also posted the review that we're going to do on Monday. If you guys want to get a head start on it, I think your best chance of doing well in this quest is to do the 5.5 and 5.6 homeworks and the review packet this weekend. And then if you come in on Monday, you'll be ready to review, do it again really quickly maybe, or ask questions on what you didn't understand, okay? I would say at least read through the review packet and see what you might be the most confused on, okay? Again, thanks for your cooperation, guys. Sorry this is kind of long, but we're just kind of got to, had to get fit everything in before spring break. You guys take